The next part of the lesson is compound interest. Simply put, compound interest is just a concept of interest upon interest. If we use a mathematical representation, compound interest earned each period can be defined as the rate of interest multiplied by the principal plus any previously earned interest. It might be easier to understand if we use an example. Let's look at the same $100 principal amount, interest rate of 5%, and a 5-year term. The cash flows would look like this. For year 1, you would earn $5 interest on your original principal. At year 2, you would receive another $5 interest, but the $5 from the end of year 1 would also earn 5% interest, making that worth $5.25. Your total amount earned at the end of year two would be $10.25. If we continue on to year three, our principal amount of $110.25 earns 5% interest. So the total interest earned, including the three interest payments of $5, total $15.76. Looking at the final amount at the end of year five, you would end up with your original principal amount of $100, the obligated interest payments of $25, but also an additional $2.63, which totals $127.63. Compare this amount with the slide for simple interest, and you can see that the compounding increases the amount that one will earn. Compounding is a very powerful tool, and it's even more noticeable when you have a longer time period. As you can see in the graph on the slide, the effect of compounding grows as the number of years increase. In this slide, we examine the effect of compounding frequency, that is, the number of times a year interest is compounded. If interest is compounded semi-annually, twice a year, you will earn more interest. The reason that this concept is important will be discussed in greater detail when we talk about yields in the Fixed Income Fundamentals course. In order to help cement your understanding of compound interest, we've created this handy spreadsheet so you can see how the calculation can be done using Excel. First of all, let's use the same numbers as we did in the earlier example. PV is $100 today, interest rate of 5%, and a term of 5 years. Then we can start populating the table. The principal won't change over the course of the 5 years. The interest payment starting in year one is simply the interest rate multiplied by the PV, which is $5. The interest earned in the first year is just $5. So the future value in one year's time would be the principal plus the total amount of interest earned over that year. In year two, your interest payment would be the $5 that you earned in year two, but you also have to include the $5 from last year that has actually been compounding at the same 5% rate. So your total future value in two years' time is $110.25, which is the same as we've shown in the earlier example. If we fill the calculation over, you'll see that the number in year five of $127.63 is exactly the same as we had on the slide. We could also do this quickly by using the formula. And as you can see, the numbers match up. To help calculate compound interest with a frequency adjustment, we've included another spreadsheet so that you can do this yourself.
But first, I'll demonstrate how to use the spreadsheet to replicate the figures that we had in the slide above. We start again with a PV of $100, interest per year now of 5%, with three years and annual payments. The principal throughout the life of the bond will be the same. The interest payment will also be the same, which is the principal amount multiplied by the interest rate per year. However, in order to adjust for the frequency, we need to then divide it by the number of payments per year. At the end of year one, we have total interest earned of $5 with the future value of exactly $105. That's the principal plus the amount of the total interest earned. In year two, the total interest earned will be the coupon paid in year two plus total interest earned from the previous year compounded at the interest rate divided by the frequency. And the total FE will be the sum of the principal plus the total interest earned. If we extend this out, we'll see that the number of 115.76 is exactly the same as we've had in the slide previous. Now, if we include the frequency adjustment, as we do here, by changing F from 1 to 2, first of all, we need to recreate more periods. In this case, it will be six periods as a compound semi-annually. The principal and the interest amount don't change. And if we fill in for up to six years, we'll see that the number of 115.97 also matches what we have in the slide. If you want to calculate the future value using the formula, we can do that this way. Formula would be the PV multiplied by 1 plus the rate of interest divided by the number of compounding periods raised to the power of the number of years multiplied by the number of compounding periods. And you can see that the number is exactly the same as we've done using the table of 115.97. You may think that it might be prone to misunderstandings when one refers to interest rates without considering the effect of compounding, and that would be true. In order to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, you might hear the term effective rate being used. A nominal rate is the stated rate of interest without any compounding, and effective interest rate is the rate of interest with the effects of compounding. The formula for converting nominal rates into an effective rate is rate effective RF equals 1 plus rate nom, which is the nominal rate, divided by the compounding frequency F, and raised to the power of F, and then subtracting 1. To make it clearer, please look at the following table. Using a 5% nominal rate, but different compounding frequencies, you can see the effective rates can be quite different. Let's look at the table for semi-annual compounding. A 5% nominal rate would become 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 2 squared minus 1, which gives you an effective rate of 5.06%. If we look at quarterly compounding, using the same 5% nominal rate, the effective rate would be 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 raised to the power of 4 minus 1 which gives you an effective rate of 5.09%. This table shows how the language used is important to understand whether we're dealing with nominal or effective rates. When no compounding period is stated, it's an effective rate, with compounding assumed to be equal to the stated time period. 5% per year is an effective 5% compounded annually. 
1% per month is an effective 1% per month compounded monthly. When a compounding period is given, without stating whether the rate is nominal or effective, it's assumed to be nominal. 8% per year compounded semi-annually is a nominal 8% compounded semi-annually, meaning the effective rate is going to be higher than the 8% stated. When an interest rate is stated as an effective rate, that's simply an effective rate. Effective 5% per year compounded monthly is exactly that. Please note that the nominal rate in this case is going to be lower than 5% per year. This is most important when it comes to lending and borrowing money. Banks may advertise loans at a nominal rate, sometimes referred to as APR or annual percentage rate, but the effective rate would be higher due to the fact that you include compounding. On the other hand, banks may pay interest on deposits based on an effective rate, also called APY, annual percentage yield, as it sounds higher than the nominal rate. We now revisit the future value formula, but this time with compounding. We also consider that compounding may not be annual, so we introduce an adjustment for the frequency of compounding, F. FV is now defined as PV, the present value, multiplied by 1 plus I, the nominal rate of interest, divided by F, the frequency of compounding, raised to the power of N, the number of years, times F. As an example, if you invest $100 today with a 5% interest rate per year, compounded semi-annually, how much will you have in 5 years? PV in this case is 100. The nominal interest rate per year, I, is 5%. The frequency of interest payments per year is 2, denoting semi-annual compounding, and the number of years, N, is 5. Plugging in the variables and solving for FV, we get an answer of $128.01. Rearranging so that we can solve for present value, we get the formula PV equals FV divided by 1 plus I over F raised to the power of N times F. Or rearranging further, PV becomes FV multiplied by 1 plus I over F raised to the power of minus N times F. So now we work backwards. If you have a choice of receiving $100 in five years' time and the nominal rate of interest is 5%, how much is that equal to today? As you can see with our calculation, the PV in this case is $78.35. This should be consistent with our understanding of the time value of money, which implies that PV should be less than the FV. What we did just above is known as discounting. In other words, reducing future cash flows to their value currently. Using the same example that we did above, the present value PV of $78.35 is also known as the discounted value. The 5% interest can be referred to as the discount rate or the internal rate of return, IRR. And finally, the term 1 plus I over F raised to the power of minus N times F or 0 0.7835, is known as the discount factor. This concept will be very important when we look at how we price a bond.